and it creates a signal that goes back to itself. That's autocrine, autocrine. If you have a cell, and then it sends a signal to adjacent cells, chemical signal to adjacent cells, that's paracrine. So autocrine self, auto means self, paracrine, this is one that are adjacent to, it, to, to the cell, okay? The other modes are we've got the endocrine cell, and then it's going to secrete something, a chemical into the extracellular space, and then it's going to move to a capillary, to the bloodstream, and then that isn't autocrine, it's not paracrine, that's endocrine, right? And this is what the whole chapter is about, right? And then if you compare that to the other ones that we talk about, we've got neurotransmitters that act on an adjacent cell, and that's nervous, right? So this is neurotransmitters, hormones, autocrine and paracrine. Okay, so that covers one, two, three. That's the first three questions. Okay. All right. So autocrine, paracrine, endocrine, and neurotransmitters. Okay. All right. In order for a cell to be targeted. So we've got our endocrine cell, right? Our endocrine cell is going to release a hormone that's going to travel through the blood, through the blood. Here comes our, our hormone. In order for a cell to react, all the cells, all the cells of the body are going to be exposed to this hormone, right? All the cells of the body, because blood throws, flows throughout the whole body and blood goes to all the cells. In order for a cell to react, to that hormone from this endocrine cell, what does it have to have on it? A receptor. A receptor that's specific for this hormone, okay? So if this one has the receptor, this one has receptors, but they're different. This one has receptors, but they're different. This is the only cell that's gonna react to that because of specificity, okay? So receptors are specific for certain hormones. That's why every cell gets exposed, but not all cells are gonna react. Okay. Okay, that's the next two questions. All right, let's talk about some differences between endocrine and nervous. So this is endocrine, okay? Nervous, we've got a cell, a neuron with an axon, and the signal's going along, and a neurotransmitter, right? Eventually it's gonna go to its target. And the target might be a muscle or a gland, okay? Let's talk about some differences in similarity. Which one of the two takes longer? The endocrine, endocrine right? Yeah. So this takes longer, because it has to travel through the whole body first, right? Which one lasts longer? Uh, endocrine. Endocrine does, right? This can last from minutes to days. Okay, so this one takes longer, but lasts longer, right? This one, every single cell in the body is exposed to it, but only those with the receptors are going to react. This one is quick, short duration, and very focused, right? Only the cells that are innervated by it are going to be uh, exposed to the same, right? similarities they can use the same molecule like this might be exactly the same this neurotransmitter right here might be exactly the same molecule as is coming out of this endocrine cell so that's a similarity between them okay if it comes out of an endo endocrine cell it's called a hormone right if and this can happen we've got a neuron and it's secreting that same signal. This isn't called a hormone, it's called a neurohormone because it's coming out of a neuron, okay? So this hormone, this is a neurohormone coming out of a neuron, make sense, right? So this is a neurohormone. Neuro.
Okay, and hormones can be, they can be steroids. So that's be lipids, those be lipid steroids, right? They can be proteins, and they can be polypeptides. which are basically just really, really small proteins, right? Okay. That's question nine. That's question nine on your exam. Are there gonna be like, is it just questions or is it like going to have that on there and then you have to like fill it in? This one? There's, there's, like anything like that. there's four fill-ins and I'll tell you what those are when we get there. Okay. Okay, um, let's talk about lipid soluble versus water soluble now. Okay, lipid soluble versus water soluble. All right, so hormones can be lipid soluble or water soluble. The water soluble ones, as they flow through, they're just fine because blood is mostly water. Mm -hmm. Lipid solubles, though, they don't <laughs> they don't flow just through just fine. They need to attach to something. They need to attach to something, and that something is called a. Binding protein. Yeah, so lipid solubles need attached to a binding protein, okay? Now, lipid solubles last longer because they're not solubilized easily, so they're not excreted easily. So water soluble, they don't last as long as the body because they get rid, they, you get rid of them out of your body through what? Sweat. Well, peeing. Peeing. So right. waste. Yep, that's right, urine. That's why pregnancy tests work, they test for hormones, right? Now, the ones that don't leave the body really easy, those lipid-soluble ones, they get broken down um, it, by a process called conjugation and that happens in the liver. I think that's the question you were asking me about yesterday. Conjugation. It was on your review. Yeah. No, it was, I don't think it was in, your, in the book, maybe. But if it's not in the book, it has to be in the book. Something new. But it's not the PowerPoint. But conjugation is the breaking down of these uh, lipid soluble hormones, and it's done in the liver and kidneys, but mostly in the liver. Okay. So that's that one. That one. So that's, that takes care of all of those. Half life. So, half life of a hormone, half life of a hormone is how long it takes for what to happen. Yeah, for half of the hormones need to be broken down, but in this case we talk about hormones, and it's how long it takes for half of the hormones that were produced to be peed out. Okay, you're broken down. In this case, removed from the bottle. Okay. We've talked that one, covered that one. Okay, let's talk about patterns of hormone secretion. Patterns of hormone secretion. So this, uh, this would be amount of, or concentration of hormone, right? Hormone concentration increases as they go up, and this would be, uh, this would be time going that way. Okay, so if the amount, the concentration of hormone is steady, What's that called? Chronic. Chronic, very good. So that's chronic. Okay. If the amount of hormone is low, but then spikes, but not regularly. Acute. Acute, good. And if the pattern of hormone secretion spikes, Regularly. What's that? Episodic. Episodic or cyclic. Are they like diagrams on the test? These are multiple these are multiple choice. So it's like those pictures aren't No. Like this one says which pattern of hormone secretion exemplified by thyroid hormone remains relatively constant for long periods of time. So that'd, be chronic. Chronic. that'd be chronic. Okay. And so that there's one, two, the next Three, three questions are this. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. So let's talk about hormone secretion and regulation of, of hormone secretion. 
right? So hormone secretion can be regulated by a couple of things. One of them, hormone secretion can be regulated via negative feedback of hormone concentration. So hormone secretion can be regulated by hormone concentration. So hormones can be regulated by hormones. Yep, so hormones, hormone secretion can be regulated by hormones, right? Either of their own or some other hormones, okay? Like we talked about releasing hormones, the tropic hormones, right? Those are hormones that, con that, that make, that regulate hormone secretion. They can also be regulated by nerves, right? We talked about stimulatory and inhibitory nerves acting on an endocrine cell, okay? Okay, so they can be regulated, they can be controlled. Hormone secretion can be controlled by <laughs> hormones, by neurons, and by basically anything else, <laughs> right? I think this one gives you three. There's three. gonna be questions about the APG and the PPG, right? Yeah, so this, so that's the next question. So um, it says, yeah, don't get confused about this one. This question, so there's three things that can control. You ready? Hormones, nerves, and then it says other substances other than hormones. So anything else, okay? Okay. Yep, and then that one the same, same. Oh, if if the con if this secretion, right, is determined by the concentration of a hormone in the blood, that's called humoral control. Humoral. So if it's if it's regulated by the concentration, that's called by feedback. That's called humoral. And that's not just endocrine. If anything has to do with the blood, that's called humoral. H U M O R A L. There's an H U M O R A L. Okay. And that's negative feedback. We talked about what negative feedback was, right? So that's another question. So most most hormone secretions are regulated by negative feedback, not positive feedback. Okay. 